This is Ibert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map, Cabana Republic. On the left side as the Yellow Empire, this is Dimon. On the right side as the Purple Soviets, this is Deep Dark Fantasy, aka DDF, which is what I will be referring to him as. Dimon once again returning, playing Empire. Very solid with Empire, of course, Soviets is his, probably his best faction by a good margin, but he is by no means bad as Empire. We've, of course, seen that in the past. And this time, up against DDF. Last time, he was against uh, someone else on Infinity Isle as uh, another SVE. So, we're jumping on Cabana Republic. Definitely been the home of some epic, epic games. And of course, as we've seen in the past, sometimes you get into a bit of a stalemate on this map. And things can get uh, a little bit stagnant, but this is also a big map. Lots of economy, lots of attack pads, and we have seen just some epic, epic games over the many, many years of Red Alert 3, uh, I guess 12, going on 12 years of Red Alert 3. And uh, I'm trying a new mix of recording settings. And if you've been following the saga of uh, 4K versus 1440 by, or 1440 versus uh, everything else that's been going on. So between somewhere, between all of these settings somewhere, I will find some kind of thing that works as the best balance. Some people care about the minimap, some people don't, and uh, for those of you who haven't noticed, recent videos have been a mix of resolutions as I'm looking for an even better recording setup than normal. So, we'll have to see how this turns out as DDF going to be expanding up to the north, dropping the War Factory and the Super Reactor before the expansion. We saw a little bit of Terror Drone action earlier on, using the Terror Drones to try and lock down those dojo cores, which can be sneaky, sneaky things in the hands of a sneaky, sneaky Empire player. But for DDF, he's doing what he can to uh, to keep them safe. Going to be knocking down some of his own walls, it looks like, so his hammer tank can give good protection of those harvesters. Tangu's going to be sharking around the map. They're looking for any expansions. They're looking for that bit of intel. Conscript is going to be given his life to protect that building. And both of these guys did manage to grab their oil derricks. As you saw, there was a bear hanging out around here trying to trying to get that guy up and running. And uh, I just had a I just had a moment where I think I may have referred to DDF as Demon just because I'm so used to seeing Demon play Soviets. But Demon, of course, our Empire player. So both these guys looking around the map, going for that scouting, going for that information. And DDF is getting pushed back into a corner. And this is something that we definitely see on other maps as well with Empire player, Empire players. A good allies, a good Soviets, good Empire. Anyone who's good at a strategy game knows that vision is important. And equally, on the opposite side of that, you know that shutting off the vision of your opponent is also a good thing to do. So as these guys squabble around the map looking to take teeny tiny advantages, one of the things that they're always looking for is vision, is keeping an eye on your opponent's expansions, is making sure that once they drop an ore collector you can drop a Tangu to try and shut it down. And similarly, DDF has a terror drone and a hammer tank ready to attack, ready to attack as he pushes in there and uh, honorable discharge is probably activated and it will do a little bit of damage, but the reactive armor on that ore collector will keep it safe for the most part and he can get back to work. So Demon, always a big harasser, always a guy who seems to do what he can to strike a little bit of fear into enemy ore collectors' hearts and minds. And uh, if you can get those extra few kills on harvesters, Demon is the player who is absolutely going to take that opportunity. Tankbuster doing a little bit of damage to those hammer tanks, going to be forcing them to pull back as they're trying to leech down that sieve structure, trying to uh, do a little bit of damage there. One tank who's going to be returning from the north, flying over this army, and the harassment again, unsuccessful on the kill of the Harvester. MCV out on the water for Demon. He's going to be looking to get himself a cool five refineries up and running while in the south. He's got a couple of Chopper VXs acting as a hit squad, even a Tengu mixed in here just in case there are any Bullfrogs or MiGs to try and give him trouble. There's one Bullfrog going to be able to try and push away that Tengu, but it's actually going to be two different hit squads trying to hit two different Harvesters at the same time. The Bullfrog means that these, chip, these Chopper VXs 
chippers, if you could call them, are going to be a little bit less effective, but they're finding a different opportunity, a different opening here as that hammer tank does barely manage to survive. The same may not be able to be said for this chopper VX, but yes, they do both manage to barely, barely survive. A Tengu in the north narrowly not getting the kill on that ore collector. In the south, the story is much the same, but this is bot time for Demon to get those five refineries established. And Demon is no fool. He knows terror drones are going to be coming at for his expansions in the near future. And he knows that he needs to be protected against that as the Navy Guard is going down in the north, in the south, on the actual island. Conscripts clearing out these buildings one by one. Chopper VX is going for some shots on some bears. Obviously, that's not going to work very well as this dojo is inevitably going to be getting shut down. And that's just a nice expansion point for DDF to kill. You got to kill your opponent's ability to produce stuff. And oh! losing both of those chopper VXs that's not unforgivable because Demon is a is ahead in the in the refinery game at least for the current moment it looks like DDF is going to be evening things up but Demon actually grabbed that uh grabbed the oil derrick as well so that's even better for him he's got those two oil derrick income and it, you don't have to hold the oil there for that long for it to be worth it, and you're also denying that income to your opponent, so it's worth it in that sense as well. Pulling all of the forces back for the attack, so good harassment there. Also pulls the pressure off of the middle of the map. In the north, a bear is going to get the kill on at least one tank buster, may even get a sec second tank buster if Demon doesn't quite realize it, and he doesn't, so that's cash just going down the drain. This terror, this terror drone locking down that Tangu, not allowing it to get that honorable discharge, although it's still doing a bit of damage, and this ore collector will eventually die. The terror drone does get the infect, and the ore collector will escape for the current moment, but for now, the, uh, the Tangu is... Oh my gosh, this Tangu might barely get the kill here on this ore collector. No, it does not. The terror drone gets the kill in the north. One harvester does go down, and it looks like... Uh, or something also ended up going down there as a sentry gun is going to be the defensive choice for DDF. He's also going to send that terror drone up there. This harvester will get back to work, but I mean, honestly, when the harvester is that low on HP, I do agree with, Demo with DDF's decision to rebuild that harvester that way. Ooh, mainframe core. So we got some tier three out on the water. The tier two has already been purchased on that dock, so it could be Shogun battleships in the future for Demon. And hey, if you can get a, if you can get shoguns first, then every single expansion on this map is going to be under threat. And that is a great way to force your opponent to attack, create a desperate situation that they have to attack into because they've got no income back home. And that could be exactly what Demon is going for. Another Tango hit squad going to be heading out across the map. And again, as DDF is marshalling forces in the middle of the map, if you can draw them back, pull everything out of the middle of the map, then that could be enough to buy you time to have an overwhelming force end. Looks like the Desolator Airstrike will completely miss. Demon does see that, and a couple of Twin Blade, or a couple of Tangu is going to be going down as the Bullfrog's able to get the kills nice and easy. Twin Blade's going to be showing up, trying to get their own damage on these Tangus, but it's actually going to be the MiGs that do all of the damage, that do all of the killing. One Terror Drone does go down, and it looks like for now, the Tangus may end up escaping. You know, you don't want to drive your MiG too close to enemy lines. DDF breaks off there, and it looks like he has realized that he's had, he's lost that oil derrick for some time now, going to be recapping it in the north. Bullfrogs and Twin Blades going to be seeing that this is a fully upgraded tier 3 naval yard that this is a robust expansion and DDF has made a mistake of letting this go unchecked for this long. Obviously terror drones wouldn't be the easy solution there. A lot of tank busters or not a lot of tank busters mixed into this army but a couple of tsunami tanks are going to be pushing forward and giving the Imperial Warriors an opportunity to crush through what little defense there was here for these hammer tanks and Imperial Warriors they may not do a lot of damage to hammer tanks, but they absorb shots, they do a little bit of DPS, and they allow your other units to get more favorable engagements. Of course, MiG's going to be here, and the Twin Blades under no threat from the ground army of Demon. A little bit of an oversight there that he just doesn't have any anti-air packed with this army. And now Tsunami Tanks, weakened and already defeated a little bit there, are just going to get shut down by this many hammer tanks. The Twin Blades continuing to do more and more and more damage. The infantry getting totally crushed there as Tank Busters may be able to get a couple of kills. 
but ultimately all of the tsunami tanks will go down. Nice use of honorable discharge to get an extra kill on a hammer tank, and the hammer tank numbers have been brought down. The tank busters, uh, the tangus may actually get an extra kill there, but this attack won't be able to go the distance. It won't be able to keep going too much further as uh, the Twin Blades, the Hammer Tanks, and the Bullfrogs are too strong of a combination from DDF to let that attack go any further. He actually got more Hammer Tanks. Demon got more Hammer Tanks out of that engagement than I thought he was going to be able to, just with the, the sheer number of crushes and the, the Twin Blades putting constant pressure on those, on those Tsunami Tanks. One Shogun battleship out here on the water, but it is going to be up against an Akula sub. you got to shut down that Navy Yard immediately, and it looks like one more Akula might barely pop out before this Shogun gets the kill on the Navy Yard. The answer is actually no. Just enough power in that Shogun battleship to get the kill on that Navy Yard, and I assume it's going to be uh, rebuilt in a couple of moments here, but... A, a Naginatana Cruiser is actually going to be the choice, not another Shogun battleship for Demon, so he is going to be... Ooh, we may have a special game on our hands. He's going to be switching out of the artillery into the tier two ship v ship kind of a boat. I guess kind of it's kind of like a battleship equivalent, as uh, it's really just designed to kill other stuff on the water. Hammer tanks flying in, and this is not something you see very often. Maybe he was playing a little bit too much Kane's Wrath, and he was like, "Hey, I really like that call for transport ability." As twin blades are not actually going to be dropping the hammer tanks; they're just going to be using their guns to get kills. King Oni also on the field, a tier three mecha bay, a heavy investment for Demon to pay, and it looks like the MiGs will barely get shut down. Yeah, they do actually get killed, that, though the Tengus also suffer heavy losses. Naginatana does go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Akula sub, but it's going to be helped out by his Shogun battleship friend who has gone fully heroic, allowing that Akula sub to... Uh, I guess barely survive, but the Naginatana is also going to barely survive and go back for repairs, which is going to force that Akula sub to surface. I assume it's fire off its special ability or something, but no, the Akula does finally go down there in the north side or in the south side of this island as DDF is going for the kill on the King Oni slowly, bit by bit. He's working away at that HP. A MiG here to defend these Twin Blades, but this is going to be too many Tankus that are actually not focusing on the MiG, so the MiG gets a couple of free kills there, and a second MiG shows up to finish the job as all of the Tankus do not go down. One heroic Tanku still stands against all of the Soviet if air firepower Ten twin blades carrying hammer tanks are an expensive unit. Holy cow. If those go down to Tangus, that is going to be a huge economic loss to DDF, but he is getting some nice damage on those harvesters. The MCV being forced to pull onto land, getting chased down bit by bit by these Skywings as they are actually going to get the kill on the MCV. Not something you see very often. The MiG pulled away to do some kind of defense, but it's too little, too late as DDF loses his MCV even though he's doing economic damage over here to the harvesters of Demon, the the Mecha Bay still survives and is actually pumping out units, which actually means that this instant dojo could crank out a couple of tank busters to try and even the odds. This last twin blade does go down. DDF's attack has been thwarted with the exception of the one hammer tank, but guess what? Hammer tanks are really bad at doing swimming. They can fly, but they cannot swim. And it's going to be heading up north. Going to be... I guess taking out that expansion, and that's what DDF has got going for him. But beyond that, I don't, I don't know what his answer to these shoguns is going to be. If he had a huge number of twin blades, he could maybe overwhelm the sea wings. But I don't see Demon letting that happen. Chopper VX gets the kill on the hammer tank. The hammer tank unable to break down the walls, unable to get the kill on that harvester, and things are looking dire for DDF. When you lose the artillery war, you haven't lost the game, but you're very close to losing the game. Having to drop five grand on rebuilding that MCV is also not comfortable. Although the Terror Drone could get the infect, could get the kill. The Naginatana Cruiser barely gets the snipe there. Demons hope reigns. Uh, continues to, to spring to life, as I don't know what that phrase was, but the Terror Drone could have gotten the kill, and that would have been massive for DDF, but instead DDF is, I guess, going to be trying to base race, but you can't base race with Twin Blades against Sea Wings, so there's no way with this much lead time that Tamon is going to let the air power of DDF seal the deal, take the game, although Sea Wings getting infected by Terror Drones and the Shogun Battleship also getting infected is a big deal. He's lost so much, though. 
And uh, actually, terror drones take a surprisingly long time to kill a fully heroic being repaired Shogun battleship. Although, oh man, if this Skywing wasn't here to get the kill on that terror drone, then actually he could lock down that Shogun battleship, keep him in one place. Sea Wing's going to get the kill on these Twin Blades. There's one down, and the second one will almost certainly go down, even though they're retreating over land. The power plant still survives, and this is just what I'm talking about. Like, DDF is a good player, but it is crazy difficult to come back from this kind of a situation. Damon still has his refineries, which actually means he can still keep uh, a little bit of income going. He may have to sell them off, yeah. When your, MC when your opponent's MCV parks in your base... Uh, things get a little bit more dicey, and did, I assume, Demon, he actually doesn't have a second Shogun Battleship, I assume he had enough cash to get a second Shogun Battleship, so actually, this is going to be the end of the artillery, I assume he's got another one on the way, but uh, that's actually, that's really annoying, so DDF getting the kill on this one single Shogun Battleship has taken the wind out of the sails of Demon. Still feel like Demon is at a big advantage overall, but uh, but DDF has done a good job of trying to even things up as much as he can. He can't have much money. I mean, he's got refineries, but he just doesn't have any harvesters doing anything. Bear is going to get the yeah get eliminated. That roar did nothing as those Imperial warriors are going to get the kill on a couple of bears. So this is just more money going down the drain. And uh, MIGs are going to show up. They get the kill on that Sea Wing, that Sky Wing, rather, very nicely. The Terror Drone does manage to get the kill on that Shogun Battleship right there, as that is now a fully heroic Terror Drone. And actually, I bet that Terror Drone would not have killed the Shogun Battleship by the time it drove all the way back to this docks. So actually, Demon may have missed a bit of a trick there. He may have missed an opportunity to save that Shogun Battleship. And uh, he really needs to get a second Shogun Battleship up and running. He's going to have two refineries going in just a couple of moments. And uh, these power plants dotted around the map for Demon, keeping him online and keeping him uh, going at the current moment. He's going to be losing this expansion in the north. And DDF actually has enough cash to get both of these refineries up and going. I'm surprised he has uh, that much cash. He may actually be worth rebuilding that harvester. I don't know if it would be, but it may actually be as uh, one power plant gets, actually, two power plants getting captured by DDF. This one very low on health, so I don't know that Demon counts that as too much of a loss. Couple of tank busters getting locked down by bears, and this power plant did finally go down to the slow but steady might of a twin blade. And Demon, despite the fact that he was on uh, like five refineries earlier in this game, has has lost almost everything. Both of the oil derricks under DDF's control, and DDF clawing his way back into this game really needs to get... If he could get that third refinery, yeah, he's up and running. So he's actually going to be at a pretty significant economic advantage in comparison to Demon. Demon still has the tech advantage of having the, the ability to build Shogun battleships, and that in itself has, has the opportunity to just do so much damage. If Demon kills this refinery and then starts hitting these oil derricks, that that really evens the playing field by so, so much on the economic front. Of course, he's, he's still ahead in the, uh, in the technology front, but it evens things up economically. Sea Wing doing a little bit of poking and prodding at this expansion. Definitely not a big deal. The one th the thing that you actually have to worry about is the Shogun battleship. And uh, targeting the Harvester, definitely not the best idea, but it is something, and... I don't know what this Defender VX is hoping to do. This Mecha Bay is hoping to be able to establish a foothold somewhere on this beach, but DDF has that observation post, so he has the ability to see pretty far out into the water. Ore Refinery will go down, but DDF has bought himself a ton of time. Crane has been dropped, and... Uh MCV is, I assume, somewhere. Yeah, it's over here, heading to the right side of the map. He may be just trying to base push? I guess that's one thing. Shogun Battleship finally going to be able to kill off this refinery in a couple of moments. DDF may be just using it to buy as much time as he possibly can. It finally does go down there. 
Yeah, I don't know how good of a idea, how good of an idea it was to establish this mecha bay here, but he's going to be able to hold on for the current moment. The MCV turns south, and actually, if DDF gets both of these refineries up and running before anything really happens with this Shogun battleship, then that'll that'll be okay. Observation post will eventually go down. It's going to take a while for these Tangus to be able to cut through that uh, that neutral structure. Terradrone does go down there. Shogun Battleship earning himself a single vet. Should go ahead and snipe that other oil derrick. Demon was clearly already thinking that. And actually dropping two refineries at once and they're building. So he has a lot of cash just sitting around. I completely misread DDF's economic situation there. As uh, I thought he was lower on cash than he actually is. Mecha Bay, low on health, getting slowly, slowly repaired, and uh, DDF, he's got a Shogun Battleship calling his name, and he can't do it, I assume he can't do it with only Twin Blades. Although, the Sea Wings were never rebuilt in significant numbers. It's just going to be the Tangus. So the Tangus don't have the same advantage of the Sea Wings of uh, not being able to be targeted by the MiGs. So you got to be careful with the Tangus. If they stack up too much, and then the MiGs have the advantage. If you spread them out a little bit more and you've got the numbers, then the MiGs will fall. Yeah, DDF has rebuilt so much infrastructure after all of the stuff he lost. Airfield gets replaced a little bit further away from that super reactor, so it takes a little bit less damage if the Shogun battleships go for the kill there. And my gosh, those observation posts with the repair have so much health. Point defense drones on these Tangus. They're going to be flying around the map. The MCV on the way heading north. Bullfrogs and MiGs, a dangerous combo for the Tangus. Mecha Bay up to about half HP. And the Sea Wings, they are announcing the coming of the Shogun battleship. Shogun going to be able to start working away at the bears also all of the stuff in this base going for the crane and the refineries definitely the big targets here and then of course the power plants are nice to shut down anyways bullfrogs gonna be rolling in as this mcv is going for the cap of that mecha bay the engineer gets sniped and for now the mcv is gonna be forced to pull forward and actually a little bit of a miss uh not paying attention here as the two of those tangos do go down to that mcv although it is possible that uh, that Demon wanted a couple of them to get crushed just to use the honorable discharge ability to get the extra damage on that MCV. The engineer very close to capturing that mecha bay, trying to use the reactor to stop the tank the tank busters from being able to get the kill as easily on that engineer as a big mess of this attack turns both directions and these two guys both getting a little bit of a foothold, losing their foothold, trying to regain their foothold, losing their foothold again. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what this Shogun battleship is doing. Uh, he drove all the way down there for some reason instead of hitting the base a little bit further away. Migs are going to be taking some extra damage here from these Sea Wings. They're going to also might get the kill on one of these Twin Blades. No, the Twin Blades pull far enough inland. They're not going to be getting hit at the current moment. And Demon, those two refineries. I guess he just spent all of his money on Tangus, and he and he didn't spend anything out here on the water. Two naval yards going down, just a body block for this Tesla coil. And DDF with the big eco comeback in this game. Finally, something goes down there. I don't actually know what that was. The Crusher Crane still stands. Oh, that was the Empire Power Plant. I'm not sure why that's the number one thing he's going for. Oh, he's trying to shut down the Tesla coil. That's why that's the number one thing that he's going for. But, of course, with a super reactor on the other side of the map, those power plants over there don't make a big difference. Losing a Tier 3 Naval Yard is so frustrating. And uh, a big investment there as, yeah, apparently all of, the, uh, all of the power in the world does indeed matter when you're building two extra Naval Yards, which I didn't think they were actually there to do anything. But this Tesla coil will barely go down as the Stingrays are trying to get the kill on the Naganatana Cruisers. The MCB so low on HP for DDF, and he's going to be calling down the satellites. He will get the kill on this dock, so there's no way to stop that, forcing the sell-off. And he actually gets cash back for both of those things. And the engineer even going to be going down there as Stingrays 
looking for a bit of damage. Ooh, driving the Naginatanas into the satellite. A bit of a mistake there from Demon. Will end up losing one of the Naginatanas there. The other one on very low HP, but it looks like it will survive the engagement with those couple of Stingrays. I don't know that finishing up both of these naval yards was uh, was really a good idea there as the point defense drones evaporate. And apparently it was a good idea because your opponent is just going to sell off everything that's there. And the Tangus aren't going to be able to compete against that many Stingrays. So at this point, maybe selling off one of those naval yards would be a, would be a good money-saving option. One heroic Stingray, one just single vet as the Bullfrogs take a couple of shots at those Tangus. But the Tangus are going to be trying to pull around and find some kind of opportunity, some kind of opening where they can do a bit of damage. Sea Wings, Sky Wings doing what they can. They do so little, but they do just enough. The Crane did end up going down. And uh, DDF is in a base race. He has nothing. This naval yard, these naval yards are his only opportunity to actually rebuild an MCV. He still has this harvester and refinery going here, but this is actually just kind of a base race situation for DDF. The MCV of Demon has pulled over to the left side of the map, and what a weird wonky turn that this game has had. Ore Collector still going to be harvesting. It will take these Sky Wings a very long time to actually get the kill. And the MiGs get caught out in the open. They don't have the advantage of the engagement. And they're going to have to turn around. They're going to have to deal with the Tangus at some point. But you don't want to uh, transform the Tangus until the Twin Blades are gone. And you can maybe overwhelm a couple of the Stingrays, but not if the Twin Blades are over top of you doing that damage. Bullfrogs, MiGs. Twin Blades, it is a difficult situation for just Tangus to try and engage. I mean, I guess you could add in the Sky Wings. They're not going to be doing as much as you would like. Refinery sold off over there or killed, and it looks like uh, ooh, MiGs getting the kill on one of the Sky Wings, and there's going to be the overcharge from that Stingray, but the Sky Wings, the Sea Wings rather, get the kill on one of the MiGs as they chase the Tangus down to the south. Point defense drones have been reapplied to these Tangus as they just continue around the map, getting every little bit that they possibly can. Conscripts getting the kill on tank busters in the middle of the map. A, a kind of a big deal mistake now that uh, now that these guys are on basically no income for uh, just about either one of them. Oil derricks being eliminated means that there's no passive income. There's no ability to just spend 1,000 credits and then get yourself back in the game with an engineer. You gotta do it the old-fashioned way, and if you don't have the cash as the Empire player, then you can't actually get that refinery up and running. One refinery getting sold off every building so important to DDF, as he probably doesn't have the cash to rebuild his MCV. That could be what he's going for there. In that case, it would be worth selling off one of those naval yards just to get the cash to be able to rebuild that. Although, he's going to be calling in balloon bombs on this one naval yard that does still exist. And that MCV pops on out moments before the naval yard ends up going down. It does get spotted immediately here by Demon, but the Twin Blades are now here to put the pressure on. And if the Sea Wings get sniped, then that's going to be a big handover. Nope. The Tangus get the transform, they get the kill, the Bullfrogs were not there to run defense for the MiGs, and now it's just down to the one single MiG. One Skywing, Sea Wing rather, fully heroic to guard the waters, and the Tangus to fly around on the land. They can't get caught by the Bullfrogs, but they gotta clear up the MiGs they, so that they can finally isolate the Twin Blades and try and get some kind of work done for Demon, but Demon, where did he send that dojo? If he sent it over here, he grabbed the observation post. I guess that's something. Oh, every Tangu matters. Man, that MiG, you gotta try and pull it over the water so that the Sea Wing can get the kill, but no, it's actually gonna be a Sky Wing now. And he's going to be going for, I guess, a little bit of a scout, a little bit of intel. And, uh... I don't know what DDF is doing. He is building stuff, selling it off, building stuff, canceling it. 
and just we're gonna have a whole lot going on for him. Conscripts will get eliminated, and ordinarily killing three or four conscripts wouldn't be a big deal. Oh, he's gonna crush his MCV. He's selling off wall segments to try and get as much cash back as he possibly can. And, uh, I don't know, I think he was getting him wall in his crane, and then he thought better of it. One Civ structure does still remain, and a Tank Buster surprise over here. As you can see, DDF is getting literally just like one, three, four, five dollars back for these walls, but he's selling everything off to try and be able to afford what he can. He's actually rebuilding walls in the north to try and make this a little bit more of a fortress. Conscript uh, does go down. I assume the conscript will go down. Final Squadron going to be coming in for Demon. He's going to get a couple of shots off on those Bullfrogs, but no, he doesn't get enough to kill the Crane. The Bullfrogs do survive. They took a little bit of damage, but now that the Crusher Crane is here for the repairs, that is not a big deal. Tank Busters and Tangus joining together in the south of the map. They're heading north. This ski, the Sea Wing, the Sky Wing gets the kill on all of those Conscripts, eliminating infantry so, so quickly, so, so easy. For, for that Sea Wing. And actually, grabbing the hospital this is one of the few times where a hospital may have actually had some kind of benefit over the course of this game. DDF is going to clear out these tank busters, and even though the crane is here, it almost might be worth instead of, you know, just dying, which they would die faster. But, you know, popping them up, getting a teensy bit of damage, trying to do something. Bullfrog's getting some shots. On the Tangus, the Tangus have no ability to heal themselves. They have no Mecha Bay. They have no Crane. They have nothing to give them that health back. So point defense drones, you can lose those. And of course, they will time out. But the Tangus themselves are incredibly, incredibly valuable for Demon. He may, he's maybe going to try and transform. Nope. He's not going to go for any kind of crazy catch of the MCV. I just... DDF... Yeah, he's got 57 bucks, so... He wouldn't... Yeah, because you get 1850 for the MCV. I think. And uh, the crane... The crane will allow him to potentially build a refinery, but just doesn't have enough cash. Now the crane's going to take a bit more damage, which I guess bleeding out money through repairs, that's one way to do it. Yeah, that's, that's doing significant damage, and he had to spend money on the walls, so like every little bit helps. Twin Blade's going to be potentially showing up. Oh, he's trying to draw the Twin Blades over. He almost gets the kill on one of them, but the repairs are here. Without the MiG, this makes this a little bit of an easier equation for Demon. Not an easy equation, but an easier equation. Balloon Bomb's now going to be coming down. Bullfrog's going to be going for the kill on the balloons, which still makes them drop, and they still do damage, but I guess it doesn't give you the opportunity to control them as much. Here goes the crane. It will fall in this attack. The balloon bomb bombs now going to be directed at the bullfrogs. They won't actually get there. They are going to be directed at the bullfrogs. The crane is gone. It's bullfrogs, it's twin blades, it's tangus for the rest of this game. And I guess there is still like 500 credits, which, you know, that gets you, that gets you an engineer. Although he could also keep that barracks sell the mcv that gets an engineer that way nope sells the barracks that's interesting i guess he's hoping the combo of tank buster surprise and tangus are going to be what gives him the edge twin blade's going to be going for the kill on that observation post and i guess the sea wing is hoping that it can get a couple of shots off as some of these twin blades are low on health and that would actually be enough to uh a couple of shots from the sea wing doesn't quite get the low health one but he does some nice damage across the other twin blade and actually 
Another move like that where the Bullfrogs get separated from the Twin Blades may be enough of an opportunity for Demon to sneak in here and do a bit of damage. Right now, if he had Twin Blades in the south, that would be a great chance to swing in and pick off a couple of these Twin Blades. One, oh, never mind. One Conscript going to get it fired out of a Bullfrog and... It's anyone's game. Oh, that Sea Wing so close to cleaning up some of these Twin Blades. Big Desolator Airstrike as it does coat this entire area in infantry killing. Uh, one Tangu does go down there. The Bullfrog's getting the kill on some of these Tangus. Coats the entire area in infantry killing toxins. I don't know what's down there in that sieve structure. Could be like a tank buster or maybe just an Imperial Warrior. He may actually be forced to bring that guy up north. And in these base race kind of scenarios, you never really know what your opponent has. And uh, there's no reveal feature like there is in StarCraft 2, so you don't have that kind of advantage of knowing that nothing's been harvested and, and that your opponent has nothing. He's going for the suicide, going for every single one of the Twin Blades. He's going to get them all, and now it's just going to be a transform. He just has to avoid the MCV. He's going to be able to kill the Bullfrogs one by one by one. Nope, that's it. Deep Dark Fantasy has been defeated. He realizes that he's never going to get the crush on all of those Tangus, and Demon has won. Definitely not the way I thought he was going to be winning, I guess somewhere around the 15-minute mark. But Demon in a base race against DDF does end up winning, and DDF pulling it together last couple of minutes there, he actually had a huge advantage in terms of the income, somewhere around the 20 minute mark, and uh, passing up Demon, but from before that, Demon was in the lead. DDF crawling his way nearly back to a victory, and that will do it for this game. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Cyber signing out.